It's a story about a father. There was a father. A real father. This father had done things, such incredible things, that there's no way that we could ever comprehend it. He's been places, created places, that no imagination could ever conceive. And before ever this father even created his children, he knew them. The children that we call the human race. When they were still a thought, he knew them. And he knew that if he created his children, he knew they would walk away from him. He knew it. He knew that they would be entangled in sin and that they would be torn away from him by their own sinfulness. He knew that he would have to take his only begotten son, his son who had always been with him. He knew that if he created them, he would have to take his only begotten son and literally sacrifice him on behalf of them. He knew that. He knew all the heartache and all the pain that he would endure. God himself, he knew what it would put him through. And even knowing all of that, and all the hardship, and all the toil, and the sacrifice of his son, he still went ahead with his plan. And there's a reason why. The reason he went with his plan is because he was thinking about you. Like literally you. He was thinking about you. And he felt, and he knew, and he believed that you were worth it. Yeah, he had, he had the power and does have the power to do whatever he wants, this father. When he created man and the entire human race was engulfed in sin and he knew that they would never turn back and there was only eight left, eight left that were still serving him. He could have just literally deserted his plan, left it, but he didn't because he was thinking about See, he's not some distant father who had a child and then left and abandoned them. He's a father that saw that the child would abandon him and found a way to make a way for the child to be back with him. He's looking down on earth. And there's his son, his only begotten son, in a garden. His son's friends were asleep. And his son was in so much anguish, he was sweating blood. And he asked three times, Dad, is there any way, is there any way I don't have to do this? Is there any way that you could 
Remove this cup from me, this cup of suffering. And the father is looking at his only begotten son that he had placed the spirit of his son inside a little baby, inside a young girl named Mary. And now, it was near the end of this baby's life. And he knew that if he did not answer the request of his son, he already knew what would take place. He knew that they would shove thorns in his head. They knew they would actually grab onto his beard and literally rip it off his face. He knew that they would whip him to almost to the point of death. He knew that they would actually string him up naked. But he also knew that the entire sins of the world would literally be, be placed on him. And he knew if that happened, that he would have to turn away his face from his son. And he knew that most of his children, if he did this, would not even care. But as he's looking at his son in the garden, he was thinking about something. There was something that still made him go through with his plan. You. At Easter, we always think, and when for good reason, about how Jesus died on the cross. But there's something that you got to remember along with that. It's who sent him. Who sent him? God the Father, who lives in unapproachable light and who has never been seen, who had a plan from the beginning. Many people understand how much Jesus loves them. But many Christians are losing the true reality of the love of the Father. the sacrifice that he was willing to make and the rejection of his own son because he knew that there would be a remnant of children that would return to him. He knew that in moments in that garden, Satan himself was coming to get his son. See, Judas, yes, he was betraying Christ, but Satan had entered him. And this was the greatest moment since the fall of Satan. This was Satan's closest moment that he would ever be to Christ. When Judas walked up and kissed him on the face, it was actually Satan. Do you imagine the father knowing what was going to take place? And he's saying to himself, it's worth it. Understand, Jesus was in on the plan too. Yeah, his flesh said, asked for the Father to let this cup pass from him, but then 
the Spirit of Christ took over and said, but not my will, not my will, your will be done, your will. The demons and Satan himself in that moment triumphing, thinking, that they've won. And when he was carrying that cross, these aren't the kind of thoughts that were going through his head of how heavy it might be or how long the road is. Or There was th thoughts in Christ's mind. And some of those thoughts and some of the images that he saw because he was fully God was you. It really, truly was you. It's not a fairy tale. In fact, you'll hear a lot of people say, I don't believe in that fairy tale. That fairy tale is only half done. This is not a fairy tale. When it came to that moment where he cried out from the cross, and God the Father turned his face away. What was the heart of Christ like? Was there anger? No. He simply said one thing. Father, forgive them. Because they had an understanding between them This was the only way to get their kids back. He was in the earth, in the bowels of the earth for three days. And when he ascended, he made a stop on the surface of the planet in the garden tomb. And Mary saw him. And he said to her, don't touch. Don't touch me yet. Don't touch me yet. Because I have not yet ascended to my Father. And when he walked into the Holy of Holies, not the one that Moses made in the desert, not the one that Solomon made in the temple, when he walked into the true Holy of Holies that the scripture says because the ones on earth were a copy of the one in heaven. Think about it. When he walked in to the Holy of Holies as the Lamb and his eyes looked into the eyes of the Father and he literally bore the scars for the sins. What was the thought of the Father and what were the thoughts of the Son at that moment? I know some of them. You. You were thought about in that moment. He takes his blood and he puts it on the mercy seat once and for all. And then where did he go? Did he rush to the throne room to sit on his throne? No. Back to earth. Walk through the wall. Say to the disciples, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid.
See, they didn't do this so that you could have a mansion. There's lots of mansions here on earth. <laughs> didn't do it so you could have a mansion in heaven and see God sitting on his throne. Didn't. He did it. God the Father sent his son and his son was willing to die. The two of them. And yes, Holy Spirit was part of this too. And they did this because they literally want, desire, long for you not to live near them. They're hoping for you to be at the wedding supper of the Lamb. See, you are not complete. He completes you. You will never find fulfillment ever in this world or in any world to come other than that literally what you were created for. Is Easter about being redeemed from the law of sin and death? Yes, it is. Going back to when the Father's looking down at the Son in his garden. And the human race, just like the days of Noah, being swept away by sin. No greater life than this, that a friend lay down his life for his friend. See, he's not looking for servants. If God wanted servants, he'd just create them. He's not looking for you to be a servant. What he wants is you to be part of him. And he wants to take you wherever he goes. And he wants you to be there with him in all that he does, in all that he creates, in all that he dreams, in all that he says and speaks. He literally wants you to be part of him. That's the plan from the beginning. He has a plan for you, an eternal plan. And not a plan for you to be a servant, to be closer than a brother to him, to be one with him. And people say, in the world, that's too good to be true. Creation itself is too good to be true. And the fact that you exist is too good to be true. And the fact that you exist and that love exists within existence is too good to be true. <sighs> too good to be true does not mean that it's not true. And though many around you will definitely ridicule you and make fun of you for believing in what they call a fairy tale. Your short moment on earth here will seem like nothing when that so-called fairy tale becomes reality and true. Don't look to the world to believe so that you will believe. <laughs> they are going to become more hostile towards this. But those who know the Father are going to become more strong.
So when we think about Easter, we think about what Christ did on the cross. But I want you to also completely grasp, if you can, that as Christ is on the cross, you have the Heavenly Father Himself overseeing the whole thing for the sake of you. You have a purpose and a destiny and a plan in eternity. And your body right now is holding that spirit that is actually you. And he is so excited when your spirit is going to return to him and you're going to be with him. So when next time you think that maybe you've done something that the Father is going to lessen his love for you, consider the fact that he knew you and knew all that you would do before you even existed and still planned to make the ultimate sacrifice because he loved you. That's the kind of dad I've got. That's the kind of father we have. You know what it's the story of? It's a story of a father who loves his children so much that even when he knows they're going to abuse him and reject him and scoff him and mock him and <laughs> literally despise his sacrifice, he goes, you know, for the ones, for the remnant of the ones that come back to me, for the ones that love me, they are so precious to me. I love them so much. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. And can you see that when the, Jesus is walking into the Holy of Holies and it's been done and it can't be undone and the power of the enemy has been broken and there might be, I don't know, there might be little key rings holders there in the Holy of Holies and a couple keys are hung up by Jesus, death and hell, Hades. Brought the keys back, Dad. Okay, if I run back down there for the next 40 days and start to hang out, be with the ones that I paid the price for, it's time that his world, in a brand new way, breaks into your world. No more, no more are you to live at a far distance at a far distance from the Father. Not only, not only are you close to the Son, but the Father is wanting your heart to turn back to Him. When you look at the cross and it's empty, think about this. No matter how hard your trials are in this world, no matter how hard life is, no matter how lonely, for some people listening to this, no matter how hard your marriage is, no matter how much your kids have hurt you or your spouse has destroyed you, no matter how much you've been rejected by your parents, no matter how much society has told you you're weird, different, you don't fit in, for all of you that have so much you don't even know what to do with all of it. For you that had so much and have lost everything. For those of you that are on the brink of taking your own life because you have no hope. For those of you that are so bound by your sin that you're convinced you could never let it go, even though you know the truth. 
For those of you that used to know Christ and have walked away, and are even claiming to be atheists, yet in your heart you know that you still believe. Know this, that the Father loved you so much before you even existed, he came up with a plan so that you could be with him forever. Your Father, your true Father. I met a young man in Edmonton He's going to be 29 years old in June. He was taken from his family at six years old, kicked out of multiple foster homes and finally at 18. And he's been living on the street since 18 years old. He's going to be 29. His real father as he's sleeping on the transit bus as it goes round and round. Loves him. And I was so proud of him when you'd think that he would say how much he hated God for his life. And yet he was crying out for him. Because you know what? Hate. You can't live on hate. You'll find that comes to an end too. And you'll finally come to the place where this young man did. Where he's like, Dad, it's not about if I live on the street for the rest of my life. It's not about that I have nothing. And it's not about that no one cares about me and no one even knows I exist. It's not about that. What it's about is you're my dad and I so badly want to be with you. When God the Father, before he even created the human race, saw that young man and said, Oh man, <laughs> I love him so much. It's worth it. It's going to hurt a lot and there's going to be a lot of pain and there's going to be a lot of sorrow. And my son, my only begotten son, he's going to go through a lot. And it's going to be even worse than the world will ever understand. The price that's going to be paid is beyond the comprehension of the human mind. But I'm not doing it so that they can say, wow, how amazing God is. I'm doing it because I actually am so in love with my children. That's why I'm doing it. And so for everyone that you're at that place and you're like, I need to be close to the Father. Know this right now. He's already near you. He's already near you. He's already near you. And the proof in your spirit, you know that his son died on the cross and rose again. Stop thinking about it with your mind and start believing it in your spirit and you will be saved. For if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again, if you do this, if you confess it and you believe it, it says that your name will be written in the book of life and you will be instantly <laughs> redeemed, saved, adopted back into your real family by your real father. There's hope in a world where there's no hope or in a world where the hope runs out very quickly. Thank you, Father. Father, I pray this in behalf of everyone that's listening. We're tired of walking with our eyes on the ground. We're tired of having an improper fear of you.
what we need to be fearful of is that you're faithful and true and just and that compromise cannot be tolerated. But the fearful part of you not wanting to be near us, you not loving us, you holding yourself from us, all that kind of fear, pray it be broken right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that literally you would put the hope of glory back into the hearts of your children. For those who belong to you and those of that do not, but will eventually belong to you. Give us hope. Give us strength. May we start to walk in faith again. And as we watch some shipwreck their faith around us, and as we watch some die for their faith, and as we see some suffer severely for having faith in you, may we not lose heart for our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs anything that happens to us here on earth. May we be heavenly minded. And I pray that, Father, your world would break into ours. Let it break into ours. Break into our world, Father. Break into our world, Father. Even so come. Even so come. Even so come. Even so come. We love you. Even now, you are drawing those who do not know you to yourself. But they know that there's something missing. People, just accept what you're created for. Embrace it. Confidently. And as you got, you're on the ground and your back's on the ground and the enemy's standing over you with his foot on your throat, realize this. You got a sword in his hand. A sword that cannot be beaten or broken. And every dart and every stab of the enemy cannot take your spirit out of the hands of the Father that you have committed it to. <laughs> he may be able to kill your body, but you, your soul, belongs to God. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Take heart. Christ has risen from the dead. And you are going to join him for all of eternity. As his friend and his lover. Not as a lover that we know here on earth, as we have contaminated it, but true, genuine oneness with him. Amen. for the revelation of this truth to deepen into your spirit right now. As you go today, 
on this Easter Sunday. It's the heart of the Father that it would just not pass by you as another holiday. It's the heart of the Father that you would realize how much He loves you. That's His heart. That's His heart. It always has been and it always will be. He's saying this to you. Don't run away from me. Run to me. Don't run away. Run to me. Come on, kids. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. He's like, tell me about your hardship. Tell me about your troubles. I'll be there with you. You can do this. You can make this. You can make it through. You can do this. Running back to the Father doesn't mean getting religious. Doesn't mean having to read your Bible every day now. Even though it's nothing against that. <laughs> it's not about going to church every Sunday. It's not about any rules and regulations. Running back to the Father is literally stopping believing to the lies of the world that your dad doesn't love you, doesn't care about you. That's what it's about. It's about believing the truth that he loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son that whoever will believe on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Complete the plan. Complete it. It started before you existed. <laughs> Complete it to the point where you're back with him and then go from there. Go from there.